Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello there, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you today. This is the Tuesday broadcast of this week here on Bible Tract Echoes. My Bible today is open to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 14. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 14. And if you know anything at all about our weekly broadcast, our Tuesday broadcast, we call it our Track and Truth Tuesdays. Now, we use our Tuesday broadcast to hopefully... Uh, encourage one another more uh, uh, more and more in the work of sharing the gospel, using and handing out gospel tracts and giving the gospel to the, all the people that we can that are around us. And this Tuesday will be no different. I have a parable that's familiar to you, for at least to many of you. I want to come and talk, and I want to ask this question. Is it right for you and I to compel people to receive Jesus Christ as Savior? Is it, is it right for you and I to compel people, to urge people, compel them to receive Jesus Christ as Savior? Or by so doing, are you and I intruding on the work that's only should, that should only be done by the Holy Spirit of God? Well, that question is being debated uh, ongoingly uh, by some good, godly people who are on different sides of that. You need to know that I think that you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, are to go to lost people, share the gospel, and compel them. Here's another word, urge them to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Do I think that's wrong? No, I do not. And we'll talk a wee bit about that today. You get your Bible open, if you can, the Gospel of Luke in chapter 14, and let's talk about compelling people to Christ and going out of our way to find lost people and compel them to Christ. As you're getting your Bible open, I have in my hand our hallmark track, our hallmark track. This is the gospel track that really started the ministry here of Bible Tracks Incorporated. This one is entitled The New Birth, and it continues to be the most sought-after track of all the tracks that we do. This one is ordered more than any other. This track has been used of God to see more people come to Christ than most of the other tracks, three, uh, three or uh, well, two or three of any of our other tracks combined. It has been mightily used of God, the new birth. It was written by our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, and it is very clear, and I think the reason that so many people come to Christ through this track is because it clearly lays out what the new birth or being born again is not. So many people are confused about what it is and what it's not. It first says, here's what the new birth is not. Then it describes what the new birth really is. And all of this is backed up and declared based upon clear Bible verses. And then it ends up by saying, how can you be born again? Oh, friend, how, what does the track say about how to be born again? It says this, it's not uh, of, uh, of blood, your blood. It's not of the will of the flesh. It's not, not by the will of man. But fourthly, it is of God. Salvation is of the Lord. Well, friend, if you're looking for a clear gospel track to share the gospel, if you're looking for a gospel track to explain the gospel, in, even in a Sunday school class, not just for new believers, but even mature believers, I recommend you get some of these, this, this track, The New Birth, and use it as, well, the lesson for a Sunday school class. If you're trying to teach people how to share the gospel, teach them what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. Here's a great tool. Let me send it to you, won't you please? This track, The New Birth, will be sent to you free of charge if you just simply contact us. At the end of my broadcast here, my announcer, who is, happens to be the chairman of the board of the ministry, a pastor in a, a, a Vista Baptist Church in Peoria, Illinois, 
uh, Pastor Joy Watt. You listen at the end. He's going to give three different ways to contact us. You pick out the way that best suits you, and you communicate with us. Give us your name. Give us your address. We'll send you this track along with a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, you're going to, I think you know that we have been now for 70 plus years sending out tracks all over the world free of charge. We even pay the shipping. I, I mean what I say when I say to you, I will send you a sample packet free. A sample packet free of all of our English gospel tracks. Well, come with me now. Let me begin reading here at uh, verse 16. Luke 14, verse 16 says this. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant uh, at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in thither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there was room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Now, I'm going to stop reading there. There's really one more verse in that little paragraph, but I stopped reading there. We have a picture here of people being invited into the kingdom of God. I'm using it here to invite people to know Christ as Savior so they can know the King of kings and Lord of lords. And so many people have been bidden who will not come. They will not receive Christ as Savior. And the heartbeat of our Lord and Savior is go and tell everybody, no matter how fit or unfit you may think they are, the halt, the blind, the maim, invite them, go and compel them to my supper. Isn't that a great truth? God compels people. God wants us, I believe, to compel people to come to Christ. Recently, I was at a church for an extended period of time, and one day the pastor and I went door to door, knocking, doing what is commonly called cold turkey evangelism. Do I like that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm kind of a nutcase like that. I enjoy sharing the gospel. And since I am in this ministry, I have to go out of my way sometimes to have the opportunity to meet and strike up a conversation with a lost person. And so I was having a great time. It was in a very, 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 <laughs> very, very small community. And I was taking one side of the street, the pastor on the other, going knocking on doors. It was in the middle of the day and some people were home. Home, some were not. But it's amazing as we would go that we'd find some people home. I'd knock on the door and I would begin to strike up the conversation. My first statement was I wanted to invite them to church. But my real goal, if at all possible, was to share the gospel. Now, I know that some people think that cold turkey canvassing calling is really not for our day. And I would say perhaps there's some places that that cannot be done. And perhaps it's someplace that doesn't work. I haven't found it yet, but perhaps that can be true. I have this sneaking idea that whatever you and I do to try to share the gospel with the lost people, God will be God will be honored, and you and I will be honored for our faithfulness, even though on the short run we may not see immediate results. But when I go to a house like that, what are my objectives? What are my goals in going there? Well, as I went, the first thing I want to do when I meet somebody and actually have a chance to talk, I want that person to like me, and I want to like them. And so I will usually comment about something that they're doing. I remember that as I was calling here at this uh, with that pastor, a man had just moving into his house. He was spray painting uh, some furniture so that it was spray painting from being white to the color black so that it would fit with the new decor that his wife wanted. Well, out sitting outside of the garage where he was doing this, there was this Corvette. I came up and I said, if you'd like, I'll take the spray can and help you paint your Corvette. Well, his Corvette was bright red and he looked to me and smiled and said, I think I'll pass on that. And with that, the ice was broken. We struck a wonderful conversation. 
But my goal was not just to make a friend. My second goal was to discern the spiritual condition of the man. I found out with this particular man, he had gone to church as a kid, but he hadn't gone to church in a long time. And frankly, he didn't want to go to church anymore. Now, the church he went to was not a Bible preaching church. It was a church that that tried to honor the Lord Jesus, but not in a biblical way. A lot of ceremony. He grew up with a lot of ceremony, uh, but very little heartbeat for really knowing Christ as Savior. The third thing, after I find out where the person's spiritual condition is, I want to hopefully expose him to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, as I was talking to this man, spray can in his hand and so on, I had handed him a brochure about the church that that I was helping the pastor, uh, from which I was helping the pastor, and I began to say about what the goal of the church was. And the goal of the church is to help people to know for 100% sure that they, when they die, they're going to heaven. So I just asked the man, that's our goal as a church. Let me ask you, I said, do you, if you were to die today, do you know 100% for sure that you would go to heaven? He said, yes, I do. Well, most people don't give me that answer. And I said, well, that's interesting. And if God were to ask you why uh, you're going to get into his heaven, why are you so sure? He gave me an answer based upon how good a person he was. It, frankly, it was based upon him keeping the golden rule. Do unto others what you want them to do unto you. That's a great rule, but it, it was not given to evangelized lost people. Well, I began to share with him that I would sure like to have a person like him as my next door neighbor, but uh, he is misinformed about the basis of getting into eternal life. I began to say, well, does your belief keeping the golden rule, does keeping the golden rule, did God promise if you do that, you go to heaven? He said, I don't know. I said, well, would you like to see a verse that God says, if you'll do something, it will guarantee you to go to heaven? He said, yes. So I got to open my Bible and showed him a verse of scripture. After I did that, I told him the difference between him getting into heaven by his good works versus on the merits of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Getting in because of who Jesus is and what Christ has done and not upon what he had done or ever possibly could do. After I shared that with him, I said, do you see the difference between these two things? He said, yes, I do. And then I said, you need to change your opinion about how you're going to get to heaven, don't you? He said, based upon that verse, I do. And then I said, my fourth goal in meeting a person when I go out and and that day was to get, I wanted that person to decide, uh, if at all possible, to receive Jesus Christ. I wanted them to decide. I wanted to urge them, compel them, to nudge them to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, did he receive Christ? No, he did not. I have a fifth goal when I uh, am out doing that. If I can't get them to receive Christ, or sometimes I can't get them to even hear the gospel, my fifth goal is I want them to come to church because I know there they're going to hear the gospel. And the last thing I want to do is leave an open door to come back and visit again. Oh, friend, are you sharing the gospel with lost people? Even people cold turkey, you say, Brother Mark, I could never do that. Well, go with somebody who's experienced and learn how. It's a lot of fun. God help us to share the gospel. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.